Hello and welcome. This is Lisa Jones, and you are listening to the Exploring Death Podcast. Hello and welcome to Exploring Death with Lisa Jones. And today I have psychic medium Bill Phillips. He's the author of Signs from the Other Side and Expect the Unexpected. His life's mission is to help people deal with the grief of losing loved ones by bringing through validations, evidential information, and beautiful messages from spirit, which heal and bring a sense of peace. He conducts individual and small and large group readings and has appeared on high-profile television programs like Dr. Phil and Access Hollywood. He lives in Orange County, California, and you can visit him online at BillPhillips.com. Welcome, Bill. Thanks for having me. I'm thrilled to have you. I just read your amazing new book, which actually just came out last week, and uh, Signs from the Other Side. Is that right? Yes, yes. Oh my goodness. So what, um, what inspired you to, to write this book? This book is really, for me, an extension of my story and of my first book. But what I wanted to do was I wanted to empower everyone um, regardless if they've ever had an experience before, you know, with the psychic medium, to be able to recognize the signs, you know, on their own, not to have to have someone tell them, yes, this is your sign, but for, for them really to go within on that soul feeling and be able to identify it on their own. And for me, that's really special just to help empower people to find that aha moment. I love that so much. I've always been of the feeling because, again, I'm also a medium, and um, I, I, it, the whole idea of people having to come to us, right, to get their answers is like, no, I want to empower you to, to find your own answers and to feel like you know when you're connected and you know when you're getting a sign. So I, I just love that that's the reason you wrote this book because I think it's, and it truly is, it's a great handbook. I read it all the way through. And in fact, I want to talk to you about certain things. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I also, oh, go ahead. oh, I also wanted it to be a guidebook, like you just said, so basically a reference for someone just to grab if they're having a bad day or if they're missing their, their loved one in spirit to like turn to the page and read someone else's story. Because I, I feel like so much of the time we're able to connect to other people. That's why we're here in the first place, you know? And so I think there's so much power in hearing someone else's story. I love that. And, I, and that's what I love too about the book is that you have so many specific examples, you know, with all your different um, experiences and they're all so amazing. I mean, that's what it's, it's just, it's captivating. I, you did a great job. In, um, in being able to capture not only the, um, you know, the, the spiritual teachings that you impart in the book, but then bringing it really down to the level of people understanding by sharing the stories. Because I think it's through stories that we're able to, to really pass on, you know, it's almost like the, you know, the, the myths or whatever that were brought down or not even myths, I guess the, the storytelling of, of the past when they didn't have writing, right? They would share the stories. And so that's what I think you did so eloquently in this book is shared so many stories that are universal truths that then people can really grasp and, um, and, you know, use in their own life. Thank you so much for saying that. That's the reason why I read it. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. You succeeded. You succeeded. Um, one thing I just wanted, I was like thumbing through in some of the places that I uh, marked in the book and one of them on page 34. And I love this one. And it's, it's a little, I, I, cause I get this question a lot, like dark forces. Um, it's like, uh, let me just see where, where to start reading. Something about, she believes that the devil is tricking me and using me by posing as good spirits to try to infiltrate the lives of others. For example, if I tell you that your mom is coming through to me, my grandma would say it's really the devil pretending to be your mom in order to gain clearer access to you. And you say, this is completely false as it comes from a place of fear. People often ask me if I am ever contacted by dark forces. The answer is no, because I protect myself with white light of God before channeling with the white light of God. And oh my God, that's the answer that I give everybody. And I've always felt that. And I've, I just love the confirmation from yes. you about, yeah, you can either go to the dark or you can go to the light, but I just hang out in the light. <laughs> Absolutely. We, it's always a choice. You know, we've been given the, the gift of free will and, um, 
anyone that knows me or has seen me work before knows that that's my that's my forte that's what i go to and that's what protects me and it always has right yeah. right oh my goodness and and it must have been difficult because i as i recall this was your grandmother right that was mm -hmm. concerned about you bringing in these dark forces and everything so yes i mean having your own grandmother kind of question you was that difficult to kind of stand up to well, you know, I, I know that she's coming from an absolute pure place of intention with it, with, with her belief system. But I remember when I, was, when I was a teenager and having experienced my own loss, you know, that um, I was lost at that point and I just needed um, comfort and information. And her information that she was able to share with me never really felt right in my gut, didn't resonate with me. Um, from the from what I was experiencing on my end of it, so I um, I I've learned over the years um, the part that's fear based and to surrender that because I feel like so much of our life and our existence here is being able to let go of the fear and be able to really tune into that light and that love as to why we're here in the first place. But so many of us, I mean, that's why we're here is to, is to learn the difference, you know? So for me, I had an accelerated learning course as a teenager <laughs> with that specific <laughs> um, question. But yeah, you know, it's something now that um, we don't discuss as much. I know that she um, is proud of me serving other people and helping them, but we don't really go into it on that level. And I'm okay with that now. Yeah, <laughs> I've learned yeah. to have a boundary with that. So, well, that's wonderful. And I, and it takes me actually to a story that my mom, when I started channeling and I was originally channeling angels. And so she wanted to try doing that. And then she said, Oh my gosh, they told me that my cancer is back. And I said, well, then that wasn't the angels. That was yeah. you know, your own fear talking to you and yeah. um, because, and she never did have cancer again. So again, that was just not true. And I always tell people that if it's not, you know, loving, helpful guidance and advice, then it's, you know, you're, you're not connected to the right source. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Because those, those thought that thought form energy is what can create illness. If we're not careful, you know, it takes a lot of daily maintenance. Yes, yes, for sure. So one other, let's see. Um, I love that you also say it's on the next page is that I see earth as a classroom that we, that was set up for us when we were in spirit form where we choose which lessons our souls would benefit from and before incarnating. So again, that's a belief that I feel like, and I don't even know where it came from, you know, probably from all the channeling I've done, but that's, that's what I believe too. So can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, so I'm uh, a firm believer in reincarnation, that we've been here countless times. I mean, I can't even keep track of it, really. But um, <laughs> And that we, we do come in in these soul groups to, um, to really try on our, our human um, costumes, basically, you know, to kind of come back down again and to experience the sensations of being in a physical body. And, um, you know, uh, it is challenging and that's why we're here and i think that if anyone um has it easy something's not quite right because <laughs> we're here to to you know to you know in some in some regard to struggle and to grow because in order to grow you have to struggle in that sense to learn about your your true nature um but um i can talk about myself in particular that in this lifetime especially you know, I chose to come back as a gay psychic medium. So it was something that, you know, coming out of multiple closets in this lifetime and, um, and, and just the, uh, the lessons of love surrounding that and needing to just know that I'm loved and that I have love to give. But I feel like um, each soul comes here to unveil that, that, that inner truth, you know, and for each person, it, it will look different. Um, and I, I also believe that, um, and know to be true, that when we do cross over, we're helping the continuation of that journey for the living. So um, it, it's all, it all goes around full circle. Wow. And, and what do you say to someone that's really struggling right now that's in, you know, kind of in that dark night of the soul or whatever? I mean, what, do you have any tips or advice for somebody? It's a very um, good question. I, I feel like I would say to them to give time some time, you know, because I feel like 
everyone has their own time frame for grieving in general and for um, depending on how a soul crossed over, um, what were the situations regarding uh, the life when they were here. Um, I, I would tell them, give it time, you know, and to also know that, as I've always been told by my grandmother, this too shall pass. You know, just that's my, because we're in this physical form and we have to live our lives on time, with time. But the other side doesn't really understand time, you know, so I feel like if you surrender to it and just trust that whatever you're supposed to learn will happen organically, there's a certain comfort in that as well, you know. But more than anything, because I'm not here to really... Um, force any kind of truth onto anybody. That's why I say be patient with it. Um, I would just encourage them to uh, to read about the other side, you know, to, to learn stories about it and to know that there is a continuation. I think just knowing that and owning that feeling definitely helps um, release and surrender a lot of that heavy uh, grief that we hold on to. Right. I love that. Well, and I also love, again, your book with all the different signs that you point out to people, because I think when people can actually start knowing that they, that, the, that it is a sign, um, it empowers them uh -huh. to then be like, oh my gosh, I'm connected. You know, it's like, it's, it's an instant connected, a connection as opposed yeah. to having to go to somebody and like, oh, I don't, I'm not connected until I go see a psychic medium or I, you know, go whatever yeah, i totally agree with that and i feel like it um definitely um without a shadow of a doubt validates that that connection because no one else has told you anything it's all coming from your own intuition and your own soul knowing and nothing can take that away from you you know right. like how they always say no one can ever take away what you know or your education it's the same thing with your soul knowing as well and the more that you develop that um, the more um, strong that faith becomes and that fear diminishes daily. Right. Oh, I love that so much. And, um, and for, for, for me, here's another example is when I got reconnected with my birth mother, she had lost a child. Actually, I met her one time and then she was killed in a car accident. So this was my half sister. And I did a reading for them several years later. And, and part of what um, Kendra, my sister brought through was like, when, when you think that I'm near you or you think it's a sign, it is like, stop doubting yes. <laughs> that it's a sign because it takes so much work for them on the other side to bring it through. That then when you start doubting it, it's like, it, it kind of erodes their, <laughs> their, their willingness to keep trying, you know, if you keep pushing it away and I was like, Oh, that can't possibly be a sign or, well, maybe it's a sign. But so it's like, wow, when you think, you know, like Kendra said, if you're thinking of me, I'm around you. Like that's me tapping on your, on your consciousness, you know? So, so true. <laughs> it's so true. And I think that's a really good point to point out is that it, it does seem subtle, you know, the other side, how they communicate with us is subtle because it's not some huge dramatic uh, experience, you know, it's something that you have to really pay attention to. Um, and I do feel like um, part of the human side of us is the doubtful side of us. So we're always gonna have that there, um, but it's just a matter of keeping it in check and knowing when, when to interact with that survival mode versus letting, letting your soul kind of take over. You know what I mean? Right. But I tell people the same thing, when, when you have the, the memory of your father laughing or, you know, the memory of him bouncing you on, on his knee, that's him communicating with you, you know? Right, right. Um, and it does take a certain level of uh, just awareness, you know, and trust and, mm -hmm. and belief system as well. But uh, I believe that they all go hand in hand. You know? Absolutely. And as you say, subtle, that's the key is, mm -hmm. is learning the subtle language of spirit because, again, as mediums, it's something that we work on and we hone. And the more that we do, the more clear it becomes. And so for the average person, like you said, especially with belief systems, you know, if they're kind of wary about it, that subtlety just gets lost in translation, you know, Absolutely. frankly. Absolutely. Yeah, you know? it does. It just gets trapped and locked away. So Right, right. So yeah, so you got to be open hearted and open minded and <laughs> And just ask for the sign and, and, and then when it appears, 
fully embrace it instead of right. sprout it. Exactly. Yeah, I, I feel like gratitude's great for that when we surround that sign with thank you, you know, that the other side responds to it. They get that drum rolling and they will continue to give you more and more and more. They're they're just so happy when we actually pick up on it, you know. So that's right. Yeah. That's right. I love it. I teach a a, a class called um, well, it's you know, communicating on the other side. And I my it's called PALS, P-A-L-S. So you pray, you ask, you listen, and then the S is for say thanks. So oh, yeah, saying I love thank that. you is definitely and so yeah, it's your pals on the other side. <laughs> that is so perfect. That is awesome. So um, yeah, let me there was a couple other things. Oh, um, well, yeah, I know you mentioned angels. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Just, this is on page 37. I also believe in angels, beings that have never been in the physical body. They have always been in heaven are, and are lightest and highest vibrational energy, which I, I love that. Too. Once again, I, when I was reading this book, it just so lit up everything because oh, it's so... Wow in, you know, in connection with what I do, but because when I, when I channel, and I'd love to know your, your thoughts, um, like when I bring through passed away loved ones, it's a lower, denser vibration than when I bring through the angels or you know, yeah. masters or, or other entities. So I'm curious your thoughts on that. It's the same thing for me as well. And, but when I was, um, when I was younger and I didn't quite understand the, the vibrational elements of it, you know, I, I didn't quite know like, okay, which one's which, but um, it just took me basically developing a dialogue with them, you know, um, but I feel like um, just to connect to someone who's in spirit, it's only because of the, of the difference in frequency. So if you think of it in those terms, we're just basically tuning into the right channel together. That's what we're doing, you know, but it's, it's very subtle and it's very, they're very close to us. You know, you don't have to think outside of the box to make that connection happen. I think that sometimes people think too hard about it, you know, or try too hard when the purpose of it is to be effortless, you know? Right, um, right. And it's usually when we, the medium gets out of the way that these, this incredible healing can, can take place, you know? But it does require the channeler to be free of all of that um, ego and anything that would kind of block that channel. For sure. Absolutely. And, and frankly, that's what I've struggled with is being a former accountant. And I mean, this whole thing just kind of opened up unexpectedly for me. So getting that doubtful mind out of the way and me worrying about what are people going to think of me and all of that stuff, you know, it's, it's been an ongoing process, you know, even after 15 years, it's still oh, absolutely. layers and layers that need to be removed and set aside and... <laughs> Oh, I totally agree. I don't think we're ever done learning this, you know, especially in, in being of service because we're evolving as people. So is our ability. And so is our understanding of that connection. Right. Know? Right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So interesting. Ah, <laughs> I love it. I love talking to I, a fellow comrade in oh, this. Of course. No. And I remember when I was younger too, I had, um, a few people kind of take me under their wing and uh, one person in particular would, would, would tell me, she would say, um, don't left brain it, don't left brain it, you know? And I was like, what do you mean? Like, I, I, I understood it, but now it just makes so much sense, you know? Like, just get out of your head, get out of your head, you That's know? That's right, that's right. Uh, I know, as I, as I call in my channel, I'm always like, and let me step out of the way so that I can be a clear and concise channel because exactly. you know, that's, that's what really messes it up is that left brain trying it to, is, you know, does. figure it out. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Oh, my goodness. Um, I'm curious too, you also mentioned soulmates in, in your book. So what people are always talking about soulmates and wanting to meet their soulmate. And so what's your take on that? Well, I feel like, um, because of pop culture, people, the, the majority consensus is that your soulmate is your one and only, there's only one of them, you know, they are, they're the one, you know, and um, what they don't realize is that going back to the soul groups and the reincarnation, every person that we've experienced life with before in some way, they're part of our, you know, our, our trajectory and they are a soulmate to us. So it doesn't have to just be like your partner. A lot of times it's people that um, 
that short of are showing you how to heal yourself, you know? So it could have been the alcoholic father that abandoned you when you were 13. You know, it could have been the first husband that you married that um, showed you how to forgive because he had an affair with somebody else. You know, there, there's just so many elements to it that kind of go uh, below the surface. Um, and it could also be a teacher, it could be a colleague, it could be someone that you bumped into and had the soul connection with, you know? Um, that's the that's the mystery of the universe, I feel like, is that we're always sort of being nudged in the right direction to have those connections with. And um, yeah, so I, I firmly believe that um, the soulmates are people that we're just kind of having this hello with again in this lifetime. I love that. I love it. Because I, I agree too. I think there's just too much about the whole like, oh, there's this one and only. And, you know, if they've either died or, you know, it didn't work out, then people are just left like, oh my gosh, I've got, you know, I'm never going to meet another soulmate or my soulmate. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and even, um, you know, the word twin, twin flame as well, that, that is used to, to describe that one and only. But from what I have received through um, the various souls over there um, is that some twin flames are children that leave early, you know, or their mm -hmm. parents that leave early, you know, they're kind of like our, our guiding light in that sense. And they're guiding us in this life. And a lot of times I feel that they're not really even able to experience that much of physical life together because the energy is so strong. So what I, what I believe and find is that usually one exits earlier in life and kind of is that twin to the other one from the other side helping guide them oh i like that um, yeah so that's that's kind of what they've they've shown me but um nonetheless um it there's endless possibilities when it comes to a soulmate that's right i, I like that and that opens the door for people so they don't have to feel so you know, constricted on what that definition is. So that's beautiful. Yeah. Well, tell me, uh, you've got so many great stories that you share at the end. What are, tell me like one or two of your favorites so that people listen. Well, you know, um, one of my favorites is a story about a woman who had lost her son and she went back to his home and she asked him, see, this is the part that I love. She, without having any prompt from anyone else, any outside influences, she asked him for the rainbow. She asked him for that, that evidence, you know, and when there's so many different ways that the other side can send us a rainbow, the part that I found incredibly moving and, and actually when I read this particular story, I still cry because it, it has such a, such a raw emotion to it. I, I can feel her through the story, um, is that he delivered the rainbow to her, you know, in the space that he knew she would be best able to receive it. And the part to me that's so awesome is that um, she looks out to her, to her lake from her window and she sees, she sees the end of the rainbow in the water. Now, I don't know about you, maybe you have. I have never seen the end of a rainbow before touch down. So I thought that gave me the chills in itself, but I feel like it was even more validation for her, you know, that- Yeah, I've got chills as you're talking about uh, it right now. I'm like, woo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that it was totally him. And so I love that story. I also love anything involving music because I feel like, um, you know, the souls that are on the other side, they're, they're trying to find a voice box to communicate with, you know? So whether it be their particular song that they loved or it be lyrics to a song that pop up randomly around you, they're always trying to give you their words and they're, they're literally nudging and tapping into any source that they can find to give you those words, you know? So, so it could also be like, you know, you're at the store and someone in front of you, you hear them saying your mother's favorite quote in front of you, you know, and it just brings you back, you know. It's so amazing how they choose to do that. But so that for sure is one of my favorite stories in the book. And there's so many stories um, over the years too, besides that are in the book that I can just go on for days with you on. But um, I love anything music related. I love one of the stories in the book about the song coming on the radio and how spirit orchestrated it to be at the perfect time, you know, like all these delays and all these circumstances that made this person go to his car at the specific moment and in that specific time. 
this song came on that would never have come on this particular station. Like those, that's the irrefutable evidence, you know? Right. And yes, some people may say, oh, it's a coincidence, but if you really understand how they work, you know just what had to happen for them to get that to you. So I think it's, I just applaud them for that and thank them for aligning everything perfectly to happen that way, you know? Oh, that's, that's so great. And, and you brought up the idea of skeptics or, you know, people that think it's coincidence. So what, what's your take on all that people that just are, you know, you know I know that within my, um, w- within my practice, um, I have so many people that I see that are closeted um, skeptics. So they will come in, but nobody would know about the fact that they were seeing a medium, you know? Um, and then we have people that, that are even um, the word cynical comes to mind that are just, very closed off to any any chance of there being something larger out there than themselves. So I'm not there to convince them either way. I'm just there to share myself with them in that regard. But I feel like um, I feel like being skeptical is important, especially in this day and age of where um, there's uh, this has become so sensationalized, you know, and um, Unfortunately, there is a light and a dark, you know, there's this reference and um, not everyone um, is of the light when they're doing this, their, their intentions aren't always pure, you know, so I feel like it is good to um, have that skepticism on some level, you know, like let your intuition tell you is what you're experiencing, does it resonate with you, you know, or is it just, does it sound way over your head? You know, you have to go within to feel that information. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I, I welcome everyone's opinions. I think that's why we're all here is to share those differences, you know, um, but um, to the ones that are just very afraid or the ones that are may have been hurt um, to the point of not trusting anything else out besides themselves, you know, I would just, um, I would give the message of just give it a chance, just, just give it one chance and see what happens. Right. Yes. Yeah, I agree. And I think also by being, I mean, I've had a few people come in and just cross their arms and be like, read me. And I'm like, whoa, like when you shut yourself down so, so mm-hmm. deeply like that, it's, it, I found it virtually impossible. Again, that was early in my career to read them because they mm-hmm. just, it's like they put up a bulletproof shield or something in front of them. Absolutely. And, um, and, you know, so it's difficult to, uh, to bring anything through. So it's almost like to me, skeptics almost, um, they create, exactly what they're what they believe right (laughs) Right. absolutely absolutely yeah if you because i always feel like you get whatever you put your intention into with the reading you know right exactly Um, yeah and where the second book is more about um kind of keeping me out of it and letting the stories speak for themselves within my first book there's a story about someone in there who was um atheist actually and the people that she lost were also atheists. So when she had booked her appointment, she used a fake name, you know, she sent in a money order. There was no trail at all to this person. And when, um, when she had her experience, um, for her anyways, what came through for her was so, um, moving and what her people over there were sharing with her was that we were wrong about this, you know, this is real and it changed her whole life and perspective and it gave her um, a second chance at life because it showed her why we're here and to live in the moment, you know, and not to live in that fear um, or that judgment. So um, the other side's always trying to inspire us. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. That is, that's a great story. (laughs) We were wrong. We were wrong. (laughs) And and I think what comes through, you know, to me kind of an overriding theme is that, like you said, it's like people like, oh my gosh, if I would have not been so fearful, if I would have fully lived my life in so much, you know, in a bigger way. And like, you know, they're generally, it's like they're telling their loved ones, like, go for it. You know, this is like, stop fearing whatever it is you're fearing and go for it because life is short. It's over in a blink of an eye, you know, at the end of the day. And um, I just think that's such a beautiful message, you know? Yeah, and I, I love what, what you're saying. I feel like it's just uh, when we think in those terms and we 
allow ourselves just to go for it, you know, that there's a, there's a surrender that happens within that. And it, and it lets us really take all that pressure off of us, you right. know, right. regardless of whatever you're going through, just knowing that this is temporary, this, this shell is temporary. It makes you be more, more grateful for it, you know, and take better care of it and everything. Exactly. Exactly. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Well, I generally pull some cards. Are you open for me pulling a few cards? Oh, sure. Please. Excellent. Yes. I'd love okay. to. Let's see what spirit has to share with us today. <clears throat> okay. All right, so the first card um, is usually, well, is the blockage card. I don't know why I, I say usually, but it's the blockage card. So abundance uh, mm -hmm. is showing up right now. So um, I guess what I'm getting is, uh, well, I guess it feels like it's about the book initially that it's like, you know, it's just started, you know, and that there's an abundance that's coming and that it's, oh it's really just, um, just the beginning. And so, um, I mean, which of course it is, which is so exciting. <laughs> oh my gosh. And this is exactly what you just said. This is your action card. Is oh, to surrender. <laughs> yes, that's, mm -hmm. that's and so, spirit right there. yeah, there's that spirit and, and that's it. It's like, it's, it's like stop left braining it is what I'm getting, you know, just from what you said earlier yeah. and, um, and really just go with it. And my whole body is tingling right now. So spirit is definitely coming through mm -hmm. and, um, and then your outcome card is compassion. It's oh. just, you're going to see how much this book just really helps so many people and, um, and the compassion that, uh, that you know it was written with and that it that it brings into people's lives is just gonna it's gonna change them i mean just like that woman you talked about the skeptic yeah. who came in and you know you were able to really bring that through and it changed her life and i i truly believe this book is going to do that for so many people oh my gosh thank you so much i love it i it's great confirmation. So thank you yeah. so much. Oh, you're awesome. so welcome. You're yeah. so welcome. So I, I would love for you to tell the listeners, how do you do readings? Like is, you know, how do you, how can they connect with you and things like that? Yes, I, I do readings almost every day. <laughs> um, and I have a website. It is my name. So it's billphillips.com. Um, and I also, besides my private readings, I also do audience readings. Um, I do, um, uh, small group readings. I've been doing more uh, teaching of workshops around the country as well. So I'm so grateful for every opportunity that I have to connect with somebody. Um, and my, uh, my, the reason why I say that is because my personal reading waitlist is about two years long at this point. So I encourage people, if you can't get in or something, come see me out at an event, say hi to me. You know, there's, there's multiple ways to, to connect. So Fantastic. Well, and I'd love to invite you to come to Maui and do do a program here. Oh my God, I <laughs> yeah, would love that. Would, that. Yes, that I've be been fantastic. trying to plan something there recently. So that's... well, good. Well, let's stay in touch because I, <laughs> I I can get you connected with all the right people here. <laughs> oh my gosh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Bill. This has just been such a pleasure. I again, I can't say enough good things about your book. I encourage everyone to go out and buy it. Again, it's called Signs from the the other side opening to the spirit world and yes, um thank you it's, and it's i appreciate available you. on amazon right it's on uh, in amazon and yeah well, anywhere that books are sold so yeah so very grateful and um i thank you so much as well for allowing this this uh time right now so thank you're, you so much and for so being welcome. so gracious and it's, you have a beautiful energy so thank you so much <laughs> thank you yes. and thank you for listening to today's podcast Thank you for listening to the Exploring Death podcast. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. Before you make any financial or legal decisions, consult a professional. This show is copyrighted by Exploring Death. Written permission must be granted before syndication or rebroadcasting.